Hi everyone, my name is Yuxin. Today, Shang Yuan and I are going to talk about the idea of wearable microphone jamming. This is on behalf of our colleagues Hui Ying, Steven, Zhi Jing, and our advisors Pedro, Ben, and Heather at the University of Chicago. This idea is about using a wearable to disable microphones in its user's surroundings. And I want to show you directly what I'm talking about. So, how does it work? I can tell you how it works, but it's confidential. As you can see here, these two people are having some private conversation. And to protect their privacy, she is going to turn on the privacy bracelet. As a result, the camera only recorded this strong white noise. And this noise is so loud that it disables the microphone's ability to do any useful recordings. Besides the camera, other microphones in, this, in the scene are also disabled, like his smartphone, his smartwatch, and this voice assistant. And I want to play the rest of the video, and as you will see, they are still having normal conversation. This is because this noise is something that somehow only the microphones can hear, but not humans. So why do we need a microphone jammer? Today, microphones are everywhere, like the voice assistant right here. They are also in your kitchen, they are even in your car. But unfortunately, these microphone-based devices are not secure. They can be easily attacked. Here is an example discovered by a previous study. This user is talking to the voice assistant, and the top left corner shows the attacker's screen. Alexa, stop. Goodbye. I will vote Democrats. This is just one basic attack. There are several more advanced attacks out there. So how can we protect ourselves against this privacy threat? One promising way that researchers has, have been looking at is to disable, to jam microphones. A very simple idea is to blast super loud noise into the room to cover human voice, like the white noise generator here. But this is not effective because it also disrupts human conversation. And recently, Roy and his colleague found a new way to jam microphones. They use inaudible ultrasound instead of audible noise. And let me tell you how it works. So our microphones are designed to only record sounds that human can hear. So ideally, ultrasound should not be captured. But in fact, when ultrasound passes through the microphones, it automatically gets shifted to the low frequency band. And this is because the ha hardware defect, which is the nonlinearity of microphones amplifier. With this property, we can send ultrasound to cover human voice without interrupting normal conversation. And you can even buy these devices on the market. They work well. Microphones close to these devices can be jammed, but they share three limitations. The first one is that they are all stationary device, so they do not go with user. And the second one is that they have limited angular coverage. You need to point them to the target microphone to jam. If you don't know where the microphone is, then the jammer will not work. Even you know where the microphone is, your primary task as an user is not to doing whatever you are doing, like having a conversation, but instead your primary task is to looking at things and then point the camera to the target microphone. Another thing makes this even harder is that the jamming coverage is not evenly distributed. There are some blind spots where the jamming signal is so weak, like the white spots right here. And this is because this ultrasonic Jammers are relying on multiple transducers to increase their power and coverage.
So signal from different transducers are destructively interfere with each other at some points, at some locations, and creates blind spots. This means you need to point it fairly precisely, otherwise you are going to point it in the blind spots and the jammer will not work. So to tackle these three problems, we turn ultrasonic jammer into a variable jammer. And let me show you how this solves all the problems I just mentioned. First of all, it's a variable, so it moves with the user and it protects the user surroundings. And we use a ring layout instead of a planar layout and place ultrasonic speakers all around. This design effectively enables multi-directional jamming. We ran a simulation to see how these things work. This figure shows the jamming power of a 90 degree area. The jammer is placed in the bottom left corner and the point it and point to the top. Blue means weak jamming and yellow means strong jamming. As you can see here, the planar layout has limited coverage. It mostly jam in the front and also has blind spots. For our ring layout, it covers all the directions, but it still has several blind spots. So we found that adding small motion to the jammer can blur out these blind spots. By building a wearable jammer, we can leverage natural hand gestures to reduce blind spots. We also ran our simulation to confirm our findings. I will let Shanyuan to take over and tell you how we implemented this wearable jammer. Hi, I'm Shanyuan Tang. Let me walk you through the implementation of our wearable jammer. We designed our wearable jammer in a bracelet form where we place all the ultrasonic transducers in a ring layout. Inside the casing, you see our custom circuit. We use a programmable microcontroller connected to a signal generator where we program to generate random sine wave that centered around the resonance frequency of the transducers. That is, we sweep between 24 kHz to 26 kHz. They are all in human inaudible range. And then we amplify the signal to an amplifier. Finally, our circuits and transducers are powered using a lithium battery that supports four hours of continuous jamming. So if I turn this on, this will generate ultrasound that produce an audible noise for the microphone of this camera that is recording me, but I will not hear it. So let me turn this on. It's off, and now you can hear me again. Let me show you how we evaluate our prototype through three technical evaluations and a user study. I'll just focus on highlights today. This experiment is to understand how well our prototype jams state-of-the-art speech recognizer. We place an audio speaker near our prototype and play back human speech from a large corpus. To approximate hand movements, we put our prototype on a motion platform that slightly rotates and let it jam continuously. Then we recorded the audio using the smartphone that was put one meter away. We piped the audio to a state-of-the-art machine learning speech recognizer, which is IBM Cloud that we used, and see how much text is able to be identified. We moved our smartphone around the jammer to measure the jamming coverage every five degrees from the front to the rear. Then we ran the same experiments with i4, the existing commercial product, and a planar layout, which you find in the literature. Here's the result of our wearable jammer. The x-axis is the different angles we measured. The y-axis is the word error rate that we found by comparing the speech recognition results and the corporate scripts. This shows how many words are recognized incorrectly. The higher, the better jamming performance. We see our wearable jammer jam pretty well in all the angles. 
Here is an example of the data. This is the original speech we played. And this is a recorded audio with our jamming. We see only the two first words can be recognized. Other words are either being recognized as wrong words or the recognizer just completely missed it, resulting in a high word error rate. The gray line is the jamming result of i4, the commercial product. It not only shows that the jamming coverage is very limited, but also there is a clear blind spot in its coverage where much less words are jammed. The planar layout shown in this black line has also similar trends with limited coverage and a blind spot. Compared to the other two jammers, a wearable prototype has wide coverage and similarly well jamming performance. However, in this experiment, we were controlling all the ex environment variables and the corpus is scripted and there are no real users. We decided to invite users to use our prototype. We wanted to understand whether wearing our jamming bracelets impacts one's feeling of privacy in a natural setting. Participants we recruited were asked to have free form conversations, which were not script. They exchanged the bracelets in the conversation while the phones on the table were recording. After the conversation, participants were given transcripts, which were generated using the speech recognition from the phone's recording. We find that participants feel that our bracelet protected their privacy, rating an average of 5.4 out of 7. We interviewed the participants. Some said the bracelet was noticeable, but they forgot about it or stopped feeling odd about wearing it once they focused on the conversation. Some feel more protected either when wearing the bracelet or by simply seeing others wearing it. I'll let Yuxin to wrap up our talk. To conclude, we design, implement, and use a wearable ultrasonic jammer to protect you all around against eavesdropping microphones. And the jammer has full angular coverage and minimized blind spots. As we are all surrounded by microphones all the time, our wearable jammer provides users a practical and effective tool to protect their privacy. We believe this is a great start point, and it also opens new directions for more researchers, including understanding its influence to animals, testing on more microphones, increasing its vertical coverage, and building it in other form factors. And I want to thank our colleagues and our advisors. Thank you.